Have you ever had one of those moments where you question your own sanity? Maybe you couldn't remember if you locked the front door or you found yourself talking to yourself in public. It's natural to have occasional doubts about your mental state. But what if those doubts start to become more frequent or intense? How do you know if you're just experiencing normal human quirks or if there's something more serious going on? In this video, we'll explore the signs and symptoms of sanity and insanity and give you the tools you need to determine where you fall on the spectrum. So buckle up because we're about to dive into the fascinating world of the human mind. To begin, let's clear up some of the common misunderstandings about sanity and insanity, shall we? One thing that many people believe is that you're either completely sane or totally insane, but that's just not true. Mental health is actually a spectrum, and everyone's experience is different. Another thing people get wrong is that all mental illnesses make you dangerous or violent, but that's just a myth. While a few people with mental illnesses might behave that way, most aren't a danger to anyone and are more likely to be victims themselves. Mental health is such a complex topic, isn't it? But now that you know how mental health exists on a spectrum, we can take a closer look at the line between sanity and insanity. There are a lot of things that can affect our mental state, like our genes, environment, and life experiences. For example, it's normal to feel a little anxious sometimes, but if it starts interfering with your life, that's when it becomes a disorder. And just because someone's really creative or unique, that doesn't mean they're insane. By understanding these subtle differences, we can have more empathy for those who struggle with mental health issues. To dive even deeper, let's talk about how society influences our ideas about what's normal when it comes to mental health. Throughout history, cultural factors have played a big role in shaping how we define sanity and insanity. What might have been seen as a divine experience in ancient Greece is now often considered a symptom of mental illness like schizophrenia. The media also has a huge impact on our perceptions of mental illness. You've probably seen movies or TV shows where people with mental illnesses are portrayed as violent or completely out of touch with reality, but that's not always the case. This kind of representation can create a false idea of what mental illness is really like and make it harder for people to get help. And let's not forget the pressure to fit in with society's expectations of what's normal. This can make it tough for people to talk about their mental health struggles or seek help when they need it. But understanding the complex factors that shape our views of mental health is so important. By breaking down stereotypes and recognizing the nuances of mental health, we can be more compassionate and supportive of those who need it most. You might be wondering at this point, well, how can I even tell if I have an actual mental illness? We're gonna talk about that in this next section. Let's first differentiate quirks and mental illness symptoms. Quirks are things that make us unique, like a weird laugh or a love of collecting socks. They don't usually cause any problems in our daily lives, but mental illness symptoms can be more serious and can really affect our ability to function. It's important to compare and contrast specific examples so we can get a better idea of what sets quirks apart from mental illness symptoms. The next thing we need to chat about is how context and severity can help us figure out if a behavior is just a quirk or a sign of a mental health issue. Context is all about the situation surrounding the behavior, while severity is how much the behavior impacts someone's life. For example, someone who likes to wash their hands a lot might just be extra clean, which is totally cool. However, if the situation escalates to the point where they are unable to carry on with their daily activities without constantly washing their hands, this could indicate the presence of OCD, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Alright, now let's wrap up by talking about some behaviors that might seem weird at first but are actually pretty normal. For instance, chatting to yourself might seem strange but lots of people do it to work through their feelings. Or maybe you get super freaked out by something like public speaking or heights but it's totally normal to have those fears. As long as they don't totally take over your life, they don't necessarily mean you have a mental health disorder. Understanding the differences between quirks and mental illness symptoms can be tricky, but it's important to know how to distinguish them. 
Taking into account the context and severity of a behavior can help us understand whether it's a cause for concern or just part of someone's personality. It's also worth noting that some behaviors that may seem odd at first glance are actually normal and healthy. Keeping all of this in mind can help us approach mental health in a more empathetic and compassionate way. We're finally down to the last chapter. Here, we'll be helping you discover ways in which you can seek help now that you've accepted or acknowledged that you may have a serious mental condition. Self-awareness and paying attention to our thoughts and feelings are critical components of maintaining good mental health. When we recognize and acknowledge our emotions and behaviors, it'll be easier to identify areas of our lives that may require attention and support. Speaking to a mental health professional can also be incredibly beneficial. They can offer a safe and non-judgmental space to discuss your concerns and work with you to develop coping mechanisms and strategies for managing your mental health. When seeking support, it's also essential to reach out to trusted friends and family members who can provide emotional support and help you feel heard and validated. Online communities can also be a valuable resource, providing a sense of community and connection with others who may be experiencing similar challenges. In your journey towards mental well-being, it's important to remember to be kind and compassionate towards yourself. We all face challenges and setbacks, and it's essential to recognize that it's okay to ask for help and take the time you need to prioritize your mental health. Practicing self-care, such as getting enough sleep, exercising, and eating well can also have a significant impact on your overall well-being. Remember to be patient with yourself and to seek help when you need it. If you're looking for a book that will help you gain a deeper understanding of yourself and your mental and emotional well-being, are You Really Okay? Getting Real About Who You Are, How You're Doing, and Why It Matters by Deborah Folletta is worth considering. This book, linked down in the description box, emphasizes the importance of self-awareness and paying attention to one's thoughts and feelings, and provides practical tips and advice for improving your mental and emotional health. You should also read the article down in the description box if you want to gain a better understanding of common misconceptions surrounding mental illness. It even includes a self-assessment tool that can help you determine if you're experiencing symptoms of a mental health disorder and if seeking professional help might be beneficial for you. And we highly recommend watching our other video, Say Goodbye to Overthinking, Proven Tips to Overcome Analysis Paralysis, if you often find yourself struggling with overthinking and indecisiveness. We provide practical tips and strategies to help you break out of the cycle of overthinking and make decisions with greater confidence and clarity to achieve greater success and fulfillment in all areas of your life. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on our next video here on the Tree of Life channel.